All right, mermaids coming up. Let's dig in and do a mermaid picture today. Why do they all look alike? And they're all striking these like weirdly sexy poses. Like I get it's a mermaid folklore and all that, but where's the variety? Do I need to make my own mermaid coloring book here? I mean, nothing's jumping out at me. Man, I don't want to do any of these mermaids. Wait, I have another mermaid coloring book. I have a better mermaid coloring book. All right, so for any of you that are still around and haven't run off to get your pitchforks, let me just put the disclaimer out there that I do enjoy Jade Summer coloring books. They do have a place. However, I personally am not a fan of the mermaid books. They're very similar and they just aren't sparking that creativity that I'm hoping for today. And when I saw that I actually had a mermaid book by another artist that had more of the tone that I was looking for, I decided to do this one instead. So please don't, you know, try and kill me. Don't, don't raid the comments or anything. I do enjoy Jade Summer. It was just a playful joke. Now, disclaimer out and out of the way. Thank you for joining me. This is Davin with Davin D Doodles and it is currently storming outside. We are flooding again and I'm pretty sure Zeus is pissed because every now and then you're going to hear a really loud crack of thunder and hopefully I don't lose power because normally I do whenever the wind blows. But all that out of the way, I've decided to finally, finally crack open the book for Mermaids and Other Sea Creatures by Camilla D'Errico. I really like her illustration style and I was always afraid that I was going to mess up her images by trying to color them so I've been just putting it off. But today I feel creative, I feel like I just need to do it, and quite frankly I'm trying to get into the mood for Mermaid, so what better book to do? She has cute little characters, I have cute little characters, it just goes together. And what I think I'm going to do is use some new art supplies that I got from my scrawler box. These are Derwent metallic colored pencils and supposedly they're watercolor soluble. I did not find that to be the case. Maybe I didn't use enough water. Maybe I was expecting them to react as a watercolor pencil. But I'm going to zoom in here and show you the colors that I do have. Let's see if I can get it in. There we go. So these are the colors that they have sent me. This is more of a blue tone, purple, this is pink, green, and this more of like a almost silver and like goldish. They look much more vibrant on black paper, but clearly this is not going to have black paper and Camilla's book is white paper. So I wanted to see how they would look on white. Now these colors do, I believe, work very well with the colors that I have for my uh, Caran d'Ache Super Soft watercolor pencils and I figured we would just go that route. We would kind of mix and match, we would see what we could come up with and hopefully it's a pretty image at the end. And assuming that the book takes watercolor fairly well, I mean this paper isn't quite as thick as Johanna's, assuming it takes it well maybe we'll even do a watercolor image for a background with my sonnet watercolors, but that's a big if because as you guys know it takes me forever to do anything. So I'm going to zoom you back out, oh nope wrong way, I'm going to zoom you out here a little bit and basically I'm just going to do the very first page that you can color in this book because I want to see how it handles before I possibly destroy other images. It's going to be this page here, it's cute, I like it, and quite frankly if I screw it up and this starts to warp and look ugly, it's the title page, who cares? So we're going to work on this image here and hopefully it'll be cute at the end. So there's actually something interesting happening with these pencils that I wasn't expecting to occur and I kind of wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's so strange and maybe this is just because I'm not used to mixing my media and I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not very familiar with watercolor pencils and things like that. So this is my initial swatch for my watercolor pencil just so I can get the color down and kind of compare it to the metallic color that I was going to be using. This is what happened when I actually added the metallic pencil on top because I was planning on doing my layer first with the watercolor pencil and then just going over and adding the metallic on top. I added a little bit of water just to see what would happen and it completely washed out. 
and then suddenly the metallic color kind of started moving around. So I'm thinking if I want to keep a strong metallic color to the pencil, what I'm going to have to do is actually start with my metallic color pencil, kind of like this, kind of color in where I want it to be um, or where I think will look good. And then I think I'm going to have to add my watercolor underneath. So I'm going to zoom you in so you can see what's happening when I add water. So I have my metallic colors here. And now I'm just going to take my pencil and start doing a light wash underneath. And this was really unexpected and I don't, like I said, maybe this is just because I haven't really used them much before. If this is normal, please let me know because I'm really curious and I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to handle on the actual coloring book page now. So I'm going to just add my water and you can see how it starts looking milky and then it starts kind of carrying up into the actual metallic. So it makes me wonder, like, is this the best way to do it then? I hope, of course, as always, this is really textured watercolor paper, so all of this shouldn't be a problem when I do it on the coloring page. But it just makes me wonder if I'm doing it, or if I was planning on doing it backwards, and if so, maybe I should just go this route. Because the same thing happened with all the other colors. I've decided I'm probably not going to do the blue because I couldn't find a very good match for the metallic after all. However, the colors for the pink and the purple and green seem to match up fairly nicely. Like, I can see this being a nice little gradient. Um, I'm just kind of shocked with how it works, because this is another instance where I tried to add it on top and it totally washed out. You couldn't see anything from that metallic pencil. And then here, it kept some of the texture and the watercolor just helped move it around and spread it underneath. So I'm really surprised. I might do a little bit more testing and then finally start in on our coloring book page. But I wanted to share this because I, it totally caught me by surprise. Again, if this is normal, please let me know because I'm learning and clearly I had no idea what I was doing. So let me know if it's common and I'll get right back with you. All right, so I don't know why, but there's like a huge shadow over in this area and it is driving me absolutely crazy. Um, but I don't know how to fix it right now and I'm tired of messing with my lights. So full disclosure, I went ahead, I had to take a break. I'm going to have to take breaks frequently while we work on this and we are starting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lay down the metallics first, then, then I'm gonna go in with the watercolor underneath it, well on top of it, underneath it, whatever, and then try to blend it out and see if I can get some good colors going. But um, I just wanna start by saying I am going to have to stop occasionally and take breaks because I am just like out of breath all the time lately. It's really hard to kind of like, even just sitting can be difficult. So I'm doing my best and I'm trying my hardest, but you're gonna have to kind of like, you know, go with me here. I'm, I'm doing what I can, I promise. So that said, I took a break and while I was on break, I ate some lunch and I kind of put my foot in my mouth because I got curious. Someone had posted on the Jade Summer Facebook page that they did a picture from the um, Norse mythology coloring book and I had never heard of that before. So I was very curious and I wanted to see what this looked like because I was, you know, maybe I would buy it. Well, I can't find it on their website, but while I was on their website, I did see they have a cute mermaid's coloring book. Now the book I have is like the um, four book collection of their fantasy. So it's the mermaids, the fairies, dragons, and vampires, I think. So, you know, all cool stuff. But I really just found myself enjoying the dragon pages. And, you know, a few others here and there were pretty cute. And then I saw that they had an actual, like, cute mermaids coloring book. And it's actually freaking adorable. I should have just bought that one because that's more, like, up my alley right now. And I'm considering maybe purchasing that one and doing some pages in it for, like, mermaid theme for, like, my coloring guys. But Mermaid is very heavily, I warn you now, it's going to be a lot of Duncan and Pooja because, you know, they're my babies and I love them. So it is going to be a lot of original art, but maybe I could buy that and have it like as a, a cute little, I don't know, 
um, coloring section for you guys while I do my coloring chats and all that stuff, but we'll see. I might just stick with this book, though this book I have found I want to do more like justice to. It's not something I will just like want to straight color already. I kind of have a plan for like this image for instance, and it's more complicated than I really want my coloring chats to be. Because then I never end up showing you guys a finished product, and I know that's not okay for some of my viewers. So, I already feel like really out of breath, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm actually getting sick or if it's just the crappy weather, so I, I, I do apologize in advance if I'm nasally or you just hear me like gasping for breaths over here. It's, it's, it's just me trying to breathe. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, there has been a lot going on in the world and I hope it's not all negative and you know, we're able to find some peace with our coloring and things like that. You should let me know down in the comments what you guys are coloring. I would be most interested to find out. I think I want her to be, oh see, this is part of the horse. So I think I can do her tail largely okay yeah we're just gonna do it we're gonna do it and we're just gonna not overthink it um but yeah i hope you guys you know let me know what you're coloring let me know what you've been up to even if you're not coloring whatever crafts you do if you are an artist by all means leave a link to your channel or just let me know what you've been working on so i can go check it out where i can find you and for anybody that doesn't know i have been doing stuff off of youtube I've been finding YouTube a little bit difficult to do some days because I just, honestly, I do a lot <clears throat> of talking at my job and I just get so exhausted with the talking. It's hard to do color and chats sometimes and come up with like important, meaningful things to say because my brain is just so dead. So if you want to see things that I haven't been keeping, you know, on YouTube and there has been a bit of like practices and like, you know, things that just works in progress, things like that that I don't put on this channel. They are available to check out and look at. I have an Instagram, I have a Facebook page. If you want to drop me an email, I'm always willing to chat. It might take me a few days to see it because I don't check it all that often because it's mostly junk right now. But, you know, you could always let me know that you dropped me a line or you have questions. Even in the comments, I'll talk to you. Like, I love talking to people in my comments. I wish more of you would like drop comments because I just feel like I've got a connection more that way and it's it's so nice. So I'm gonna put disclosure here. You guys probably can't see much what I'm doing so I'm gonna zoom it in because I'm going in light at first. There we go, you can see a little more now. I'm not sure if it's actually going to work out the way I want with this metallic pencil. I'm trying to keep some of the shimmer and some of the, you know, shading with the metallic pencils. Then I'm gonna go under it with the watercolor, but I'm not sure what that's actually going to do. So I'm kind of using this as like, I'm kind of working backwards because watercolor always taught me to do my lighter layer first and then go back through and do my heavy layers. Well, now I guess I'm using the metallic pencil as more of a, um, heavy layer I guess and I have to put that on first or it'll just get washed out by the watercolor and hopefully this whole thing doesn't turn into a huge mess <laughs> uh, I have the feeling someone out there is going oh no so I hope you guys like I've been saying though I hope you guys are doing well and if you ever just want to chat hit me up if you've ever used these Derwent pencils I've heard people love Derwent I've never used them. The only pencils that I actually own are the Faber-Castell polychromos. I love those things. I need to use them more. I love my polychromos. And there are people that swear by their um, Prismacolors, but I will say I'm not a huge Prismacolor fan. I never gave the pencils a fair chance because I've never been a big pencil person until recently. But I did use their markers when I was younger and I hated them. And it could just be that I wasn't used to alcohol markers. I only got them because like my best friend had them and you know, she was able to create these awesome magical things and I had no idea what I was doing. So it always came out like crap, but 
I just, I hated them. I blamed the markers and maybe I should give them another shot because I've seen Michaels has actually got some for clearance. So for anybody that hasn't hit up their Michaels lately, I bought these wonderful Karen Dash pencils for like half off because they were on clearance and I might actually go back and buy more. Not gonna lie, I'm so in love with these pencils. I might go buy another like package just to have them for when I run out. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend you guys go raid your local Michaels and see what they've got on their clearance section because I did see pastels in their, not pastels, good lord, Prismacolors. I can't even think, you guys. This is sad. They do have, or they did have at my local Michaels, um, Prismacolor markers that were... I don't remember how, how far on clearance they were, but they were nice. And it was a pretty good set. And I considered briefly getting it, but I'm such a Polychromos fangirl right now that I don't know that I would forgive myself for picking up another type of pencil. I think it's like a wax pencil that I think they are. And as you could probably tell from the way I'm coloring these, like I'm so used to like building up layers very slowly with like the Polychromos because they layer and layer and layer. I think I would just get frustrated if I tried to pick up another type. I almost didn't get these because I was concerned about that. Like I, I didn't know how these were gonna work. And I was scared it was gonna look like crap and all this stuff. So this one under like my other picture from last week, I think I'm gonna do this in sections. I think I'm gonna try this tail and see what we can do with it. And then I might try the rest of the picture because if I destroy the tail I might scrap the video <laughs> but I mean it's it's a learning process you guys have to learn with me and struggle with me though I will say right about now I'm wishing I could just kind of like go over it with a freaking cotton ball or something and even out some of my pencil strokes I'm trying not to go too fast but at the same time I'm very like conscientious of the time I don't want to make you guys sit here and wait so if the tail comes out nicely, I might go ahead and color in the rest of the picture and just have you guys kind of pop back in when we do the watercolor part because this is exactly what I'll do with the rest of the picture. And then I could like turn on some music and not drive myself as crazy. Because <laughs> really, like, the thing with my coloring chats lately is I don't have so much to talk about. I have been doing a lot of working. I told you guys about my vacation, which was a lot of fun. Like, I like to share stuff like that with you guys and how I went hiking until I thought my legs were breaking. But now it's just back to work. And luckily, I don't have a ton of interaction with the public. And the interaction with the public I do have is not very pleasant most of the time. So I don't really want to, like, share that. Like, I want you guys to have fun and not me just be bitching constantly. So I figured, you know, we'll just do it this way and maybe I'll speed it up for you so you don't have to wait to the final product and I think I am going to share the final product except for a background I'm, I'm really debating whether or not I want a background at all I might just do like the bubbles or something different colors so even though I did this over here in the metallic color I am going to go ahead and go over it with the um, light blue watercolor just because I think it'll be fun to do and I kind of want to mix it in there and make it shimmery <clears throat> and I kind of want to try to add little streaks where I think you know folds of the fin might be more prevalent I don't know I don't know why I'm talking like this is a tutorial it's not a tutorial <laughs> Please don't take this as a tutorial. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I am really excited about May. I am kind of nervous as well because I don't actually know what I'm going to do. I have ideas. So for anybody that doesn't know, May is Mermaid. It's an artist prompt thing, like on Instagram largely people draw different types of mermaids and they do all this neat stuff and usually they're very beautiful and 
you know, they're your typical mermaids. They're like the Jade Summery type mermaids. They're really beautiful illustrations. And I took that and kind of flipped it on its head because I decided that my mermaid was going to be a little boy named Duncan who loves donuts and his little best friend takes him on all kinds of weird little adventures in their wagon together because they're little kids. And basically they just have play adventures. And I'm thinking that's what my mermaid is gonna be is like one big play adventure session for them just to have like a little bit of fun with it. Um, Cause one of the prompts I believe is like mermaid eyes a friend. So I could play like where they're in their little play session. He, she manages like Pooja, the little girl manages to get turned into a mermaid with Duncan and they go on these wild adventures. I think that would be really cute. So that's kind of what I'm planning right now. I have no idea if it's going to be like a coherent story or not. I'm assuming probably not because it never really is. <laughs> so let's add some detail here. I, it'll be fun though. I can't wait. And I'm going to share that with like a lot of my progress and that is going to be shared with you guys I think. It might be shorter videos, it might just be like a weekly collection type thing of hey look what I did this week, you know, I share what I've been working on. A lot of the stuff is not going to be colored right away, but I think it would be fun to do like little coloring pages for myself. Because that's essentially what I do these for is to make like little coloring pages that I like to color. I have a few already for Duncan and um, Pooja that are just so cute and they're so fun to do. So I'm thinking that's that's my current plan and that's kind of like what I was making fun at like poking fun at myself um, when I was like I just should make my own coloring book for mermaids well I essentially do every May so I think that's pretty much what I'm gonna be going after there but I hope it'll make um, I've never really done a coherent type of story with them before I think it's definitely doable I just think it's gonna be a lot of work and that kind of you know, freaks me out a little bit, but it'll be okay. As long as it's fun and I'm enjoying myself, it will be okay. I just have to keep telling myself that. <laughs> Once it becomes work, it's a problem. So is anybody else planning on doing mermaid? I think it would be really cool if like the coloring community got involved in a mermaid type um, challenge. I know there's a few going on not necessarily mermaid related but people are doing a lot of color alongs for like the year i think coloring diva has one going on and I, i've been really bad and i haven't been doing my pictures for it um because yeah i'm i'm just bad and i've been really busy with work <laughs> it's hard to do even this every week so just joining in is kind of it's rough but maybe i'll try and get better about that so i think it would be cool if somebody out there who was way more involved and did a lot of fun stuff um kind of did like a mermaid like all of mermaid was nothing but coloring book pages for mermaids you could do jade summer you could do this book you could do all kinds of books because mermaids are popular. People like coloring mermaids. And right about now, so do I. <laughs> so I'm not sure, I don't know. I think that would just be fun to kind of merge the two things together, but maybe that's just me. And that's totally okay if it is just me. You know, we don't have to all agree. I would host something like that, but then I feel really bad if I like couldn't do a week or you know, just got lazy or something. Plus, I don't have that many followers. So I don't think that many people would be, you know, joining along. But if you do want to do that, reach out to me, even if it's just a buddy caller. Um, I can make time for things. I just keep making excuses right now. But if, you know, I had someone help keep me accountable, that might change. <laughs> so if you guys want to do a buddy caller, always reach out. Especially if you want to do something mermaid related, help me keep going with my content for my coloring crew. <clears throat> I love this color combination. It looks darker than I really intended with the, the green, but it's still really pretty. And I think I could really push the blue more, especially on the tail here. The tail can be much more blue, I think. So let's add this in. Let's boost this up a notch. 
Oh, I feel like I'm getting nasally now. All right, see that's not a bad color. That kind of blends pretty well. And this is supposed to be green, but I feel like it looks really, really blue, especially on camera. I'm wondering if it's the um, color of the metallic pencil that's helping push that color though, which isn't bad. I mean, you know, I wasn't gonna use blue anyway, like the blue uh, metallic pencil, so maybe this is the blue that I was gonna be missing. And what I'm really considering doing is I wish I had more metallic gel pens because I would love to just like push that color here and really just make it come in, but we'll see. Like just going over the scales with like a metallic gel pen or something would be really pretty. I've also noticed with this paper, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but like, I mean, it's taking the pencil well, so I'm not going to complain about that at all. It's really taking the pencil nicely. I just keep expecting it to, like... For some reason, I have this impression that to get better results with the colored pencils, you need, like, a more textured paper. And I think that's just me being silly. Um, because right now, this is really, really beautiful. Okay, you guys can't kind of see what I'm doing, good. <laughs> I'm always afraid of coloring off camera because I know I do it all the time. So, I think what I'm gonna do is like have, see what I'm not sure about is what I'm gonna do with her skin color though. That's gonna be a problem. Oh well, we'll figure it out you guys. We got this, we can do this. I am kind of wondering, what, ooh, I can, see, I cannot talk. <sighs> Deep breath. I am kind of wanting to make her skin like a green color, but her tail's green, so I don't want her to be totally green. Her hair's gonna be green too. I've decided that already. I just want it to be fun without it being, I don't know. I hate picking out colors. That's like the bane of my existence. That's why I used to love drawing in black and white so much. I didn't have to pick colors. <laughs> Nobody wanted me to pick colors when I did that. It was just, you know, different values of black and white and gray. And it was so easy. I will say something I have been considering doing is if I can get myself in a better place with like my energy levels, I would love to start doing commissions or just like maybe making prints of my artwork or something. I think that would be so fun. I have some really cute ideas and I might try to paint them, but I just, it's kind of the logistics of it. Like I don't understand where you go to get prints done of your artwork, like good quality prints that someone would want to buy. Especially if I do something on canvas, I feel like I would have to sell the original piece. And I guess I could do that, that wouldn't be a problem. But I would want to kind of make it available for everybody. So I'm, I'm considering opening up a shop, essentially is what I'm saying. Um, of like independent little art pieces and prints and things like that, the like, cute little things. Um, so I'm not sure if anybody would be interested in that. I don't know what that noise was. Do you ever hear really weird noises and you're not sure where they're coming from? And then you just kind of hope that it's someone in your house that's not like falling down the stairs or something. <laughs> I don't hear any screaming or crying, so it's probably fine. But anyway, so... Yeah, I am considering opening up an art shop and doing like prints and things like that. So here's hoping if I can get my butt into gear and actually do something besides work 40 hours a week, that would be awesome. I really think it would be a neat idea to do like um, coloring book pages. I've really been wanting to get into that, but I'm kind of scared too. Mostly because 
there's so many good coloring books out there and you'd be competing with so many different people and so many different levels. It's like almost, it's almost intimidating, like, I don't know. So I'm just gonna do her hair really quick and then we're gonna go over what I've done with water. Maybe not her hair, we'll see what her tail looks like with water. So that's kind of where I'm at um, design-wise, at least for now. And I'm not gonna do her hair in all metallics. I'm just gonna pick a couple of strands here and there to really kind of make it fun and fluid. Though, if anybody does gaming, please let me know because I have got the weirdest desire right now okay I really <laughs> I really really want to play Outer Worlds again and I don't know why I want to play Outer Worlds and I want to play um Subnautica even though that game scares the crap out of me for those of you that don't know I am absolutely terrified of water so of course I would want to play a game where like you're a, a space person that's like stranded on a water planet because why wouldn't I want to play a game like that? And of course there are very big scary creatures and things along those lines. <laughs> so I don't know. I really want to play these games and I want to know people's experiences with them. And honestly, I just kind of want to do some fan art of them as well. Because I remember really, really liking Felix as a character from Outer Worlds. He was so adorable, especially when you paired him with the priest. I can't remember what his name was. Like, what the priest's name was, but, like, that guy made me crack up. I loved that guy. <laughs> Before you complete his quest, he is, like, so miserable and just mean, and I loved it. So I really kind of want to do um, almost, like, artist-sized trading cards. I might... I might just break down and buy them because apparently that's something they used to carry at Michael's and no longer carry. Um, I want to do like little like nameplates for these characters and just have them in goofy little like poses and smiles and stuff like that and just do it that way because my life needs that I guess. <laughs> and I just kind of want to know like you know did you guys enjoy that? What's your favorite game you're playing right now? I'm really you know I'm really entering a gaming mood and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't have the time to be playing games, but I really want to. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but it's very hard to keep up with like a YouTube channel and Instagram and all this other crap to stay relevant after working 40 hours a week. YouTube videos take time, guys. And so it's like I'm doing this on my spare time on the weekends, which isn't a whole lot. I have other crafting projects I want to do which are equally time consuming because I don't know if you guys have ever sculpted before, but it's a process. <laughs> and so I'm just trying to kind of keep up with everything, but I really want to play this game. And I've also wanted to, um, I think I have it downloaded on the Switch, but I want to start playing Stardew Valley again on my Switch because that is so much fun and so relaxing. I actually prefer Stardew Valley to, um, Animal Crossing, and please, you know, don't murder me for that either. I know that there are plenty of Animal Crossing fangirls and fanboys and all that stuff, but <clears throat> Animal Crossing for me is just, there's not enough to do. Like, I, if I want to play a game, I want to dedicate a day to playing a game. I want to be able to play for hours, and so that's one reason I really love my Bethesda games, even though they've done really shady stuff. That's also one reason that I really enjoyed my, um, you know, Outer Worlds was like that. You can just play and play and play. And Animal Crossing just doesn't do it for me. I did enjoy uh, my life, my, or my time in Portia. I've been considering downloading that again also, but I just, there's something calling me back to Stardew Valley. And it's like, I need to go, I need to play some more. <laughs> So I don't know, maybe I'm just being weird, maybe I'm being illogical, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta. And when you're in bed and you're really tired and you can't bring yourself to pick up a pencil or colored pencils or crayons or anything that requires too much thought, video games are always there for you. <laughs> so at least that's my experience.
So I'm not sure how much detail I'm going to give this hair. I do like it though, it's very pretty. And I felt, I'm really, you know, it felt like it needed to be green, so I'm really glad I'm doing green. I keep thinking I'm gonna kick my dog, because she's usually under my feet, but she's not under there. For once. For once, she is like out by the door. Oh, now she realized she's not under my feet. <laughs> she's gonna come back, but. I don't know, like, are you guys getting all these nasty storms that we are here in Louisiana? Because it's been bad. Every day for the past couple days, it's just been one thing after another. And I mean, it's, it's pretty intense stuff at some point. But luckily, the past couple days, we haven't had issues with power outages or anything like that. So that's a good thing. But it does just make me kind of wonder how bad this storm season's gonna be if it's already this active. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm really not sure what to expect. And my poor cactus out there has just been getting pounded by rain. I should probably try and bring it inside, but at this point, it's had so much rain. It's just like, I don't know if there's even a point to bringing it in. I hope it doesn't explode or die or something. My dad had them in Florida, right? And he had them outside, unprotected, and those things thrived. So if they thrive, like if they die because they've been getting overwatered here in Louisiana, I'm gonna be mad. But to be fair, I mean, I guess, like I don't water them. They have to get rainwater. I do not water them at all. So hopefully that'll be what saves them in the end. I don't want them to die. That's part of the reason I bought land in Texas, guys. I need to take you somewhere. <laughs> Alright. So this is pretty much just going to be... Let's get her hair done. I love this blue color so much. And it doesn't even look blue, that's the worst part. Green color? Is it green? I don't know if it's green or blue anymore. I think I've called it both. I really just hope that by going over it with the metallic also, it's not gonna you know, mess it up when I add the water. But we will have to find out because too late now. <laughs> too late now. So I'm gonna do like the little, oh, there's light hitting it. We'll say there. And there. I don't know where my light source is actually coming from in this picture, just so you guys know. I hadn't put that much thought into it when I started coloring and I probably should've, but there. Just add. Honestly, this is probably going to turn into one of those situations where it just gets covered up by accident anyway. So I don't know why I'm worried about it. <laughs> okay. Add. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Barely. Okay. I was going to feel really bad if I did it again. So one thing I am kind of excited about, I just, ah, I don't know. I feel like I need to go, well, for one thing, I'm, I've got a couple art boxes coming that I'm super excited about. The scrawler box for April is on the way. And I also may or may not have bought myself a birthday present um, from an Instagram artist that I wanted to support. And she does a lot of watercolors and they're beautiful. And she handmade her watercolors. She made metallic watercolor paints. And those things are so gorgeous. I saw them and I fell in love and I had to have them. So I bought myself an early Christmas present, or fuck, Christmas, it's not Christmas, it's my birthday. I bought myself an early birthday present and they are on their way. 
So I think that will be something I make a video out of, is just kind of sharing like, oh god, you guys, look, I finally splurged on watercolor stuff and this is what I got. I've never had like custom watercolors before and they are um, actually handmade. They're metallic watercolor paints. And if I like them, I might actually order her other sets of like the regular paint too. Even though I have like a perfectly good, really good quality set for my other watercolors. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta support your local artists or fellow artists. She's not local, she's in Finland. But no, she's in Switzerland. I don't know, she's in one of those countries and she does amazing stuff. So when I saw she had art supplies and she made it herself, I was like, yep, we're done. We're, we're just gonna buy this. <laughs> so I'm really excited to get those in. Um, did I necessarily need it to do that? No. But you know what? I told myself I deserved it and I bought it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I have that coming and I'm really excited about it. So that will probably be a video upcoming and we should probably have a counter of how many times I've said so. <sighs> Some people like say um all the time and they don't realize they're doing it. I think my word is so. I really think I've said it too much, but whatever. There probably will be a video of like a swatch and stuff like that, even though I think I may have bought the last one she made. So maybe that's kind of mean to do, but I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll do like a hey, I bought these, let's see what I can color. Or, you know, maybe I'll freaking finish one of my original paintings that I haven't gotten around to for probably about a year. That might be a good idea. <laughs> I started a fan art of uh, Link from Legend of Zelda. Like, it was Breath of the Wild fan art, so it's been a while. And I, I finally found the original image. And I was looking at it the other day and I'm going, I should just, you know, finally finish this off and just do something with it and I'm gonna try to see if I can transfer it onto a canvas and maybe try acrylic painting but I want to protect the original image and if I can't do that I think it would be really cool to do um, just something maybe gouache would be a really good option for it I have the Arteza set of gouache that I had bought my mom and she didn't end up using it so she gave it back to me so I might just do that um, to, like transferred onto some watercolor paper and do it that way or I might I don't know like I'm, I'm really tempted to do the watercolor but I don't know that I could I don't know gouache just has that vibrancy that Breath of the Wild has and it, it's driving me nuts I don't know <laughs> I don't know what I want to do with myself help me you guys make my decisions for me do I do it in gouache do I try acrylics do I just pretend and do something else and pretend it never existed and I never found it? Something else I thought would be kind of cool is my dad was an artist. I mean, he wasn't like a professional or anything. He was just a hobby artist like I am. And I have his old sketchbooks. So I thought it would be cool to either use some of his old sketchbook pages that are like really, really old, like 1980s old sketchbook pages. Or I could do like, you know, finish off one of his pieces kind of thing. I thought that would be kind of nice to do for maybe an anniversary of his birthday or something. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. For a second, I thought that was her tail. Like, okay, let me zoom out for a second. I'm zooming in, we gonna zoom out. So here's the image. I thought it like went out and behind her and I was gonna get so mad, but I'm really convinced it's like out and under her. And I love how this turned out so far, you guys. I almost don't want to add water to it. It's so cute. Ah, oh, do I add water or not? I don't know. I need to give her a skin tone too. I need to do a lot of things. <laughs> We're nowhere near done, but I know I'm talking your head off. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to add water and I'm going to add it to, oh, cringe. I don't want to mess it up. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? 
basically what you just saw me do is the, what I'm gonna do for this entire image. I'm going to color it first and then I'm going to come back. I'm gonna show you what I've got so far and we're gonna try to apply the water just like we did the last time and really, really hope I don't mess it up. And I'm gonna take a picture beforehand. So that way if I do mess it up, I can just post it on Instagram and just be like, this is before a disaster happened. And we're gonna do it that way because I'm not convinced this paper is gonna hold the water very well. Um, and I want you guys to be able to see the finished product. I don't want to cut you guys off at the heels or anything like that because you don't have Instagram or Facebook. So I'm going to come back. We're going to show you the finished image because quite honestly, I'm having trouble catching my breath and it's hard to talk. So I'm going to come back. We're going to have the finished thing colored and then we're going to add water, maybe if I can bring myself to do it. So I will see you guys shortly. All right, guys, we are almost there. We can see the finish line. I can barely breathe. I'm having trouble sitting up. I just want to go to sleep, but I have to finish because she's just calling out to me. I mean, come on, you have, we got to finish this up and we got to do her justice. So with that said, I know originally in the video, I was promising to do her with like watercolor. Well, I like her how she is. I really think she's beautiful. I think she looks excellent. It's just a, a colored pencil piece. I've used three different types of colored pencils. I think she looks gorgeous and quite frankly I just don't want to add water to her. I want to keep her as kind of like a hey you did this this looks great let's just go you know change directions. So we're gonna keep her as she is. As she is. I can't talk I can't even think. Guys <laughs> it's Sunday okay give me a break. So originally I know I was promising to do a watercolor background because you know I was going to do watercolor pencils and watercolor background but I don't think that's a good idea because I don't want to risk doing watercolor paint and it touching the watercolor pencil and turning into a huge mess. So as some of you may have seen from an earlier haul from a Michaels trip I got some floral pastel set of the folk art paint. This is really cheap, this isn't like the super nice acrylic paints, but it's beautiful and I've used it in, well not this paint, but I've used similar paints in a coloring book before by Johanna Basford and it turned out wonderful for the background. So I will be using these colors, hopefully to bring out her mermaidness and her little bubbly background. I'm thinking of leaning more towards the blues since she is a very close shade to this green. I don't want her to disappear, but we will see how it turns out. We will see how I may even be able to layer and who knows, maybe I'll get this acrylic urge out of my system very quickly. But I can tell you for sure, I've already taken some progress pictures. That way if I do screw up, I'll always have this to be remembering. All right guys, here it is. It is still not 100% done, but this is really, really close and I wanted to show you the paint job that I managed to do. I am so happy with the way this color looks. It just makes me happy inside. And I was gonna add a little bit more, but I think then it would probably be a little too busy. I like the fact she pops out from the background, but it's still clearly like water. And I know it doesn't come off as well on camera, but it looks gorgeous in person. So I'm definitely gonna be sealing this and keeping it for myself because it's beautiful. But I figured now I would do a little bit more chatting while I finish off. I'm gonna try and find all of the little bubbles from the page and kind of fill them in with my metallic markers and I figured this would be a good way to finish off our video. So if I can find them, cause I kind of went through it pretty good with the um, acrylic paint. And I don't know that I want to fill them in necessarily as much as I just kind of want to highlight them. But I will say, I don't remember if I mentioned it yesterday, but I went to Michael's again today because of course I did. Why wouldn't I? I mean, it's not like I need anything in the store, but I did go with the purpose of getting some more latex paint, latex paint, liquitex paint. That's what I'm trying to say. And I found phalo blue and I got a black since I didn't get it last time I went to the store. And I also went because I really wanted to check out the clearance section, which they did expand. And I was glad I did because they actually had more paintbrushes on sale. I found another watercolor paintbrush and I found um, some more oil paintbrushes. 
They're artist grade and probably not something I necessarily need right now, but if I start doing oil paintings in the future, it'll be in handy. You know, handy to have, or maybe I'll find someone that needs them. Who really knows? But I, I mean, I've considered maybe doing a giveaway with stuff like that that I find, but from what I understand, a lot of the coloring community doesn't do their own artwork, so I don't know that you guys would need them. I don't know. Anyway, so I was really excited. I went and I got um, those paintbrushes. I got the two colors that I need for my acrylic set, like a true acrylic paint that I will not be using on these poor coloring books because this book took about two washes of acrylic paint and it's still not bad, but you can definitely see on the back side here, it's a little, it's a little warped. It's, it's not supposed to take two layers of acrylic, but once I seal it, it'll be fine. But I'm not gonna use my nice acrylic paints on it. That's more for canvases. And I have some canvas that I'm going to be trying to paint with one of which has already been used so I needed gesso to kind of like cover up the old painting so I could use it for a new one so I got gesso and I'm wondering I've seen people do this and I'm really curious if you have if you have let me know down in the comments because I would love to pick your brain if you have used gesso on coloring books did you use it for painting the backgrounds like I did or did you use it for um more like, I think the person I saw use the clear gesso, used it for colored pencils. So I'm wondering if I were to gesso the coloring book first with the clear gesso, would I be able to actually kind of follow it up with both color pencil and acrylic paints or is it only gonna handle the acrylic paint? Like I'm really kind of curious how that works and if other people have done their backgrounds like I have. Um, just because I would like to maybe, I wanted to go in and do like ripples in the water where you can kind of see more sunshine, but that would require doing more light areas in the picture. And I was really afraid of destroying it because I didn't know how much more this paper would actually hold, especially for a heavy paint like acrylics. So. If you have done this before, if you do use acrylics for your backgrounds, please, please let me know if you have gessoed them. If you think it's a good idea, if you have an alternate method for doing it, I am all for learning because quite frankly, I had a ton of fun doing this background and I'm kind of in love with the idea of acrylics now, so I want to do it more. And even if it's not, you know, on a canvas, even if it's just more books like this, if I can get this effect, I want to do it. I want to enjoy coloring and right now I'm really enjoying painting so I would love to combine them you know I don't know I just feel like I'm ranting <laughs> I just don't know that I've, I don't see many people most people just use their um, color pencils and they use alcohol markers which there's nothing wrong with that I just I want to paint and I don't know why I want to paint but I do so if you're a fellow painter speak up and if you want to do a color along, particularly if it's out of this book, speak up. I'm all for it. Let's go. I really like her style, like Camilla D'Errico. Who is your favorite um, illustrator for coloring books? Do you like um, Camilla's books? I, I know a lot of people do have them. I think she's kind of like a nice medium between something super simple like Jade Summer and something super complex like even Johanna Basford can be a little daunting sometimes for me. So she's almost like a nice medium because sometimes her stuff is really simple and sometimes her stuff is more complicated and then you could always overcomplicate her easy drawings like I did here. So who is your favorite illustrator and do you like, like is there a better theme? I know there's a lot of like cute girls and women and things like that in coloring books. Do you guys want to see more like, I don't know, sci-fi theme or fantasy theme? Do you want to see more dudes appear in coloring books? Like I don't know. What do you guys want? I would love to help deliver. 
because quite frankly, I think I'm going to start making my own coloring book pages. And if you guys are interested, I could always share them with you. Because, you know, that's what we do. I'm just like really curious because I know I want to see more like, if it was me, I would like to see more fantasy and sci-fi based stuff so that you can just kind of go ham with your imagination and not be really restricted to like, okay, well this is a butterfly and this is a cute girl that looks like all the other cute girls in every other coloring book. And sometimes, I mean, that's all you want to color and that's fine, but sometimes I just want to like color something totally off the wall. But maybe that's just me. I mean, I do have a little like webcomic type thing going on with like a little merboy who's half koi and like a space mouse. So it could very well just be me. Um, all right, I've got a couple more up in the corner here. I feel like I should kind of color some of these in. We'll see. Oh, yep. And I'm wondering, it does kind of pick up the metallics on the actual dark background. On the image itself, it doesn't, but on the background, it picks more of it up. So that's kind of why I wanted to paint it in general. I really wanted to do something to make them pop. I think this one was the blue. And it's, it, it always throws me because this blue looks so silver to me. And you guys, when I was in Michaels, I did look for more of my Karen Dash Super Soft pencils and I saw more of them <laughs> on the shelf when I almost bought them because I love them that much. So I really suggest you guys go raid your local Michaels because there might be something there worth checking out. I mean, even if you don't want to do the Super Softs because, you know, $40 is still expensive. You know, I, I fully acknowledge that. And if it wasn't like my birthday, I wouldn't have even really kind of considered these and the fact that I was staring at them for like a year trying to decide if I wanted them or not. Um, so I thought about it long and hard, but having seen them again and knowing how much I love these things, it's like, I highly recommend you guys just go check out what the, what's on clearance. You, you don't know what they have until you check. And even this green stands out against the, the green of the page. That's what I like about it. Also, <clears throat> there is a new channel that I found by accident. I don't remember who they are, but they're a ghost hunting channel on YouTube. And they went to Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, and I have been there three times, at least. And I thought it was very interesting that they ended up having a similar experience that I did. Me and my husband both had um, some rather interesting things happen there, and they had the same exact thing happen. So I just discovered that today, so that's why I'm talking about it. It's um, always interesting when someone else kind of validates something you've seen, especially when you don't tell anybody what you saw, because I, quite frankly, I was embarrassed. I wasn't telling the tour guides what I saw. And he didn't either. We, the only thing we asked was like, because we had seen a person that wasn't apparently there. There was like nobody there. And uh, the only thing I remember asking the tour guide was if anybody else was up there, or if they had issues with like animals in their walls. And they said no. So it was very interesting to see somebody else we'd never seen, I didn't even know existed, have the same experience that we did in the same place same exact thing. So it was very, very suspicious. Intriguing, not suspicious, more intriguing, because apparently um, they confirmed at the asylum there that it's quite a common uh, interaction people have. So if you ever want to go to like a haunted place that does the haunted ghost tours, Trans Allegheny is a really good place to go. They do it very well. And all the money goes to like renovating the place so they can keep it open and do historical stuff. So I don't mind giving them my money. I actually really want to go back. And it's like a total overnight type thing. And you don't have to stay part of the group if you don't want. Me and my husband never did. We always kind of wandered off by ourselves. Which is why when we saw somebody 
in the hallway that didn't actually exist, we were very confused. Because uh, when you go hunting for someone and to ask them, you know, if they saw something or if they heard something and there's nobody there, it's very uh, interesting, I guess is the word. So I'm not going to fill all these in. I feel like I need to go through and highlight some of these flyaway hairs though. I wonder if my black will do a decent job. Yeah, okay. So I'm just doing the really fine hairs that kind of got painted over. Because I really like the sketchy look that she has in these images, so I don't want to lose that. Maybe I should go over it in like green though, but whatever. This works. And then our horse's mane. All right. So this is where I'm going to leave it. I am very happy with it. I like it. I'm going to zoom out so you can see it. Get my nasty uh, scratch paper out of there. All right, so here's what we have. We have our finished mermaid. We have the watercolor super soft pencils. We have the metallic Derwent pencils and we have the polychromos for the skin. Then we went in with just some folk art acrylic paint from Michaels and the teal and blue shade. Yeah, apparently this is patina and this is blue calypso. So we mixed those shades and we applied it very carefully and we did about two layers to kind of get a really nice bright bluish green look to kind of match where I figure she would be hanging out. We did that for the background, we added the bubbles with the metallic pencils, and I love how it looks. So if you've managed to make it this far, if you have not gotten sick of hearing me talk all this time, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate your time, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in seeing full process videos, including like how I painted this, how I colored everything, let me know. I do still have some of the footage that I'm not gonna be showing of me coloring this entire seahorse, of me coloring her skin and all this other crazy stuff. If you want process videos, let me know and I can start making those so you can see what I do step by step. I'm not really a tutorial, I just really got lucky with how this came out, but I love it and I think I'm going to keep doing it going forward. My next step is to varnish this and preserve it and after that I'll find another pretty picture to do. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope to have something new and colorful and creative for you next week. I hope you have a good week and stay out of trouble.